Hello, this is Mr. Gentry from MrGentryMadScience.org. We're going to discuss non-disjunction and chromosome disorders today. Um, as you can see from the picture here, we have an image of a young child with a playful pose, and this child happens to have uh, Down syndrome. As you can see, there's some characteristic features of the face, such as the wide set eyes and other morphological uh, malformities of the face uh, that give it the child the characteristic Down syndrome appearance. Uh, we're going to be discussing some of these uh, disorders such as Down syndrome and a few others. Uh, but remember as we go through these, uh, these are not just disorders, that every one of these things has a child and a family that is dealing with it. A lot of these disorders often lead to a lifetime of care by the parents and uh, disability from the child. So uh, we have to keep that in mind as we go through this. Let's go ahead and start off with the objectives of the lesson. I uh, want you guys to know what a karyotype is and what a normal karyotype looks like. Also by the end of this you should understand non-disjunction and some examples of non-disjunction disorders. And also you should be able to identify an abnormal karyotype. And I'll give you some hints on how to do that. So first off, what is a karyotype? A karyotype is uh, basically the chromosomes are uh, retrieved from a mitosing cell. Uh, it's given the mitosis inhibition agent, colchicine, stop it at my, uh, metaphase. Therefore, the chromosomes are coiled up, uh, lysed the cells. The chromosomes are removed. They're stained. They're lined up by size and banding patterns, which you guys will get practice with in today's activity. Uh, but as you can see, uh, then they're photographed. As you remember back from meiosis that there's a pair of each of the 23 chromosomes, one from mom and one from dad. And that, again, these are lined up by length. You can see the length. Uh, so the longest ones are at one and the shortest ones are at 22. And then you have the 23rd pair, which is the sex chromosomes. And if you take a look here, you should notice uh, from past uh, information that we have a, a male. We have one X chromosome and a Y chromosome. So this is what a normal karyotype looks like. What we're going to look at here in a second is uh, what is non-disjunction and what does non-disjunction cause. Well, non-disjunction essentially changes the number of chromosomes in the gamete cells in meiosis and how we'll be able to identify an abnormal karyotype is through um, where there should be a pair there's either one or three chromosomes and that's called monosomy or monosomic or trisomy or trisomic. So let's get into the different disorders or sorry let's get into non-disjunction. So what is non-disjunction? Your definition for non-disjunction is when one or more chromosomes fail to separate. And this can either happen during anaphase 1 or when sister chromosomes fail to separate during anaphase 2. Uh, both anaphases, remember that's the pulling apart. If you remember the signs that I taught you with your hands, that you guys can remember the stages of uh, mitosis and meiosis. Remember that the chromosomes pull apart. Well, actually, first we have the homologous chromosomes lining up here the uh, maternal and paternal uh, chromosomes here at the metaphasal plate and then the spindle fibers pull them apart where one of each of the homologous chromosomes is supposed to go to each uh, cell that does not happen here in fact uh, chromosome one and two or sorry chromosome one um, both of the homologous pairs are pulled to one side leaving causing two of chromosome one to be in the cell and only and none of chromosome one in this cell at the second division, we get um, an extra chromosome in two of our gametes and a missing chromosome in two of our gametes. So if we were to look at uh, the haploid number of N, where N is supposed to be 2, we actually have 2 plus 1, or basically um, an extra one here. So we have a number of 3, and then n minus 1, so 2 minus 1, we only have one chromosome. So if this was a human, what we would see is uh, n is 23, so 23 plus 1 would be 
24, or 23 minus 1 will be 22. So what happens is if these are sperm, if this sperm was to fertilize a normal egg, we'd have uh, three chromosomes at this chromosome 1 position. If this sperm were to happen to uh, fertilize a normal egg, this would we would have only one at chromosome 1 because it was missing the paternal uh, chromosome 1. So we're going to see how this actually affects uh, physiology or how the, the body actually develops. So we have some chromosomal disorders. You will need to know um, these three. Uh, that we're going to look at two trisomic or, and one monosomic chromosomal disorder. So there's only one monosomic and there's several uh, trisomic. The first one we're going to start off with is actually Down syndrome. That's the most common uh, trisomic disorder. It happens in one in seven hundred children, and it's uh, the result of an extra copy of chromosome 21. So this becomes trisomy 21, or three chromosomes at uh, part or chromosome number 21. So if we're looking at the 21st chromosome instead of just two or one pair we would see three. Now there's a wide range of phenotypes or expressions of this disorder. Some are very moderate and are hard to tell that they have Down syndrome other than maybe short stature and some uh, facial features. Uh, the picture I showed you at the beginning is actually a very moderate case. It's very severe where it's very obvious that the person has Down syndrome. They're short in stature, they have the wide eyes, the rounded face, and very severely mentally handicapped. Um, so there's a wide range, but either way, there's some uh, extra care and uh, length of care, a lot of responsibility by the parents, and some uh, need for uh, long-term intervention from family, friends, and support. Next, trisomic uh, disorders, Klinefelter syndrome. This is actually uh, when we have an extra uh, sex chromosome. This would be an X, 2X, and 1Y. These are genetic males, so this is only a, a male disorder. And even though they are males, they do have male sex, organ sex organs. Those sex organs are usually small, so very small testes, and they are sterile. So those testicles do not uh, create sperm, so they're not able to perform meiosis on their own. And even though they have these male sex organs, they do have feminization of their characteristics. So they have enlargement of the breasts, um, especially during puberty, and feminization of their uh, facial features, lack of hair, um, more rounded uh, features. However, they do have normal intelligence. Our one and only monosomic uh, disorder is Turner syndrome. And the reason it's the only example is because there's only one viable uh, monosomia in humans. And this is Turner syndrome. This happens only in about one in 5,000 live births. Uh, these individuals are genetically female because they only have one X chromosome. However, they never sexually mature during puberty. So you can think of someone who is constantly prepubescent. So they don't develop normal pubic hair. They don't uh, go through menses. Uh, so they are uh, sterile. Uh, they're short in stature, but do have uh, normal intelligence. And even though this is the only viable monosomy, actually 98% of these fetuses die before they're even born, so uh, the majority of them don't ever show up. So if we're going to summarize, uh, things that you have to know from this uh, podcast is non-disjunction. It occurs only, or it occurs during anaphase 1 or 2 of meiosis. Non-disjunction causes an extra chromosome or trisomy or trisomic or one fewer chromosome, or a monosomic or monosomy uh, disorder. Uh, you should be able to detect non-disjunction disorder by looking at a karyotype. So to do this, you would scan each of the uh, chromosomes in the karyotype, uh, looking for either one extra of a certain length and type of uh, chromosome, or one fewer. And remember, there's only one monosomic disorder, and that is Turner syndrome. Here's a quick video that I'm going to show you guys uh, that gives you a visual representation of how this uh, non-disjunction occurs using candy. So enjoy, and I hope this clear clarifies everything on non-disjunction and chromosomal disorders.